Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries about some of the most fascinating objects in our galaxy. The objects we sometimes refer to as the microquasars, which essentially represents some sort of a very dense body, usually a neutron star or a black hole, orbiting a really massive star. And in most cases, this black hole or this neutron star absorbs so much mass from the partner star that it ends up producing huge amounts of emissions and a lot of different effects we've never observed anywhere else in a universe. With the recent studies also discovering something else unusual about some of these microquasars, something that the scientists simulated right here. What you're looking at is actually a comparison between a person's heartbeat and various types of emissions coming from a microquasar known as GRS 1915 plus 105. And according to the scientists, there is a very eerie similarity between the radio pulsations coming from this quasar and the heartbeat of a human being. Which is not to say that this is functions like a heart, but it does display a lot of really interesting effects and a lot of really interesting pulsations that in some sense resemble a beating heart. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of these new discoveries, what they actually mean for our understanding of how these objects work, but I guess more importantly, talk about the mysteries of stuff we just don't really get yet. With all of the major studies, as always, available in the description below. But first, I guess let's start with the two objects we're going to be taking a look at today. They're both extremely well known to various astronomers. One of them is known as SS433, which is the object you see right there in the middle of this extremely beautiful nebula, the nebula we sometimes refer to as W50 or Westerhout 50. And as you can probably imagine, the object in the middle is responsible for the production of this nebula. And this particular star system is one of the strangest and most exotic star systems we've ever observed. It's essentially an eclipsing X-ray binary. Here we know that there is an extremely powerful black hole or possibly a neutron star, and this object is orbited by an A-type star that's probably at least 30 times the mass of our Sun. This is also the first ever discovered microquasar, and in this particular case, microquasar just refers to the phenomenon of producing these astrophysical jets and the accretion disk very, very close to the smaller black hole. Something that we usually observe around very large black holes in the center of various distant galaxies that we usually refer to as quasars. So the name itself just implies that these tiny objects seem to possess extremely similar effects to really large black holes in very distant galaxies. With all of this being located at a distance of about 18,000 light years away from us, and all of this displaying really powerful emissions visible from this distance. And there are actually several types of emissions coming from here. For example, there are obviously the astrophysical jets you see right there, with the material moving at approximately 26% of the speed of light. But apart from the emissions from the jets, we're also observing various X-ray emissions from the accretion disk as well with all of this possessing a periodicity of approximately 13.1 days, suggesting of course that this is how long it takes for the black hole to move around the star. But interestingly enough, there are quite a lot of effects here that were discovered in the last few years that nobody really expected. One of the more intriguing effects is in regards to the astrophysical jets. They seem to be slowly stretching out the entire nebula, distorting it into a somewhat long shape. It's slightly easier to see it from this angle, and you can see that the shape here is actually formed by the jets coming from this object. And because of the orbital periodicity of the system, everything here sort of repeats every 13.1 days. So essentially here everything sort of repeats itself once the star is close enough to the black hole, and once the jets start emitting more material, or alternatively, as the accretion disk starts growing and emitting X-rays. But one of the more unusual discoveries from the last few years is really in regards to what happens at a slightly farther away distance. All of this is so ridiculously powerful that it also seems to affect some other parts of this unusual nebula, specifically at a distance of over 100 light years away from the center. And it's actually something you're about to see right there, somewhere in the left corner. If you look closer, you'll notice that something else is sort of blinking at you from that particular corner. That something is gamma ray emissions coming from the spot that seems to have exactly same periodicity as the microquasar itself. But this particular spot, first of all, does not seem to align with the jets at all, but also seems to be, at least from the picture here, somewhat independent of the actual um, binary. Here's actually one of the figures from one of the studies you can find in the description showing us how all of this looks. 
So the jets are going this way, that's the nebula, but then in this spot right here, there seems to be an unusual pulsation or an unusual illumination in extremely powerful gamma rays that follows an exactly same pattern as this microquasar. Although how all of this works and why exactly this happens is really unclear to anyone right now. All of this is definitely connected, but the connection is somewhat mysterious. And because the distance here is over 100 light years away from the microquasar, it's really unclear how any of this is even possible. One of the explanations is in regards to the accretion disk and possibly the accretion disk causing some of the very highly charged particles to move in this particular direction and then slam into the cloud producing these gamma rays, but that's just one of the explanations that doesn't have any proof yet. Nevertheless, it's quite clear that this entire nebula seems to be pulsating, with the pulsation being every 13.1 days, and more importantly, seems to be powered entirely by this microquasar in the middle. And so that's of course one of these unusual objects, the object known as SS-433. But then we have this other object, also discovered nearly three decades ago, known as GRS-1915-105, another microquasar located approximately 36,000 light years away from the Sun, in this case also most likely possessing a black hole in the middle. And in this case, the scientists actually wanted to directly explore what happens in the middle of these black holes and how these unusual pulsations are generated and what sort of activity is going on in order to create these very strange, very um, unusual and eerie observations. Here they actually looked at approximately 15 years of data, looking at a variety of light, including the X-ray light and of course the radio light emitted by the quasar, with the main purpose of the study being jets themselves. They really wanted to understand how these jets are generated and what exactly causes them to suddenly appear and to disappear once in a while. And in this case, the data involved approximately 400 different points, both in X-rays and in radio light, with the first major discovery being an interaction between the two. So when the radio light is extremely strong, it seems that the X-rays are extremely weak, and vice versa. When the X-rays are very strong, the radio light becomes extremely weak. Which to the scientists in this paper suggests only one thing. All of this energy from the microquasar can only be used for one function, either generation of the X-rays or the production of radio light that's generated in a slightly different way. And because normally X-rays are usually coming from the accretion disk, whereas radio light usually comes from the astrophysical jets, it suggests that there is some kind of a feedback mechanism happening in the middle of these quasars. And specifically, they believe this works in a relatively simple way. So this black hole that's approximately 12 masses of the Sun, which is actually one of the largest and most massive solar mass black holes we've discovered in our galaxy, absorbs the mass from its partner, the star that orbits around the black hole, losing its mass to the black hole itself. And in the beginning, when the accretion disk is still growing and as a lot of this mass starts to coalesce around the black hole, this is when we start seeing a lot of X-rays. But then, at the end, as the accretion disk becomes smaller and smaller, it starts to release the jets that produce the radio light. And so in between the jets generating one type of light and the accretion disk, or actually more specifically, the black hole's corona generating the other type of light, all of this starts to kind of oscillate, moving around, producing something that actually does resemble a typical heartbeat. Sometimes you'll have a lot of X-rays, but not enough radio light. Sometimes it's the opposite, a lot of radio light, not a lot of X-rays. And so in other words, in this particular system, it really looks like the corona turns into jet, and jet then becomes corona once again. And once again, the jets end up producing radio light as they move away from the black hole, and as the magnetic field starts to interact with all of the matter in this particular region, whereas the corona around the black hole ends up producing X-ray energy, as a lot of the electrons present around this black hole accelerate to extremely high velocities and release a lot of X-rays that are then visible from really far away, which at the end produces these unusual observations to some extent resembling heartbeat. But at this point, it's still not really clear how all of this is generated. For example, we know that this is one of the more extreme black holes out there, spinning ridiculously fast, over 900 times per second. So because of this, it might actually create a lot of highly entangled magnetic fields or magnetic lines, and as these lines snap, they might produce all of this energy we're observing. In other words, this could all be connected to the magnetic lines and the magnetic field around this really powerful black hole. With an extremely entangled magnetic field and magnetic lines, there might be a lot of heating up in the corona, but when all of this snaps, that's when the jets are released, and that's when we observe the radio light. 
But for now, that's just one of the many explanations that are possible here. And in some sense, this is actually something that most likely happens around very massive black holes in the center of various galaxies. So by studying this, we might be able to understand what happens on the larger scale as well. For now though, this is still a mystery and a very intriguing mystery because a lot of these heartbeat-like connections or a lot of these powerful events that resemble some kind of a cosmic heartbeat are still extremely difficult to explain, but the fact that they seem to affect regions really far away from the actual binary is even more difficult to explain. So there are quite a lot of mysteries that are still unanswered and quite a lot of things for us to learn. But once we do, and once we discover something else, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.